We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence. How are you doing, Ben? I'm doing great. Thanks, Patrick. Special guest today. Special, special. We have not had on, I'm going to guess it's been two years, maybe more. I feel like it was a, like a year ago we were together, right? <laughs> Definitely no? not a year ago. Oh, really? No, it was probably a couple years at least. So we are joined by Heather Bergeron. Many people will know. Uh, the two of you live together. You've made humans together. My sense is that you like each other quite a bit. Um, so again, like I said, it's We've been a while. made humans You've together. Made humans oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> So Reel it in. Now, now that we're now that we're back in person, we thought it would be fun to get you back on the podcast and spend a while. So today, the first thing we're going to do is uh, do a hopper talk. So hopper talk is when I go onto the internet and I find interesting, fun, and sort of related, but not really related to questions that we often do here on the podcast. Uh, and then usually it's just Ben and I seeing if we agree, which we usually do, um, and uh, seeing where the conversation goes. So we thought it'd be fun to have you on and join us. So we are going to do uh, three questions today instead of our usual five, because we've got three of us here. Are you ready for the first one? I'm going to let Heather go first for this. Yeah. Ready? Okay. okay. Yeah. First question is, what did you finally realize was just a huge waste of time? Okay, I have, a, I have a couple, but I'll just talk about so one. So cheat immediately. Are we? Is that the rule? No, no, you can no, only no. have one. No, no, of course not. Okay, there's no rules here. One of them is um, trying to be productive when I can't sleep in the middle of the night. So oh, laying in bed, I can't sleep, and I'm just like, all right, well, I might as well pull together my grocery list. I should figure <laughs> out my schedule for tomorrow. I should figure out how to break up the second round of this workout that's <laughs> going to happen. Yep. Um, and all that does is keep me awake for longer, and I'm my brain's not firing. So I'm nothing I'm doing anyways, I'm, I'm going to forget it all in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge waste of time. And I get even less sleep than I would if I just stopped thinking about anything mm -hmm. and just let myself relax. Mm -hmm. Have you ever actually gotten up out of bed to do some something? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's not... Oh, this has been an evolution. <laughs> this is like 5, 10, 15 right. years of okay. this. Yeah. Got it. Were there others you want to share more? Yeah, give us more. First. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, another one I had was um, trying to force people to convert to my the lifestyle that I believe in living. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with my parents, for example, I think a lot of people have this with their parents that we all, you know, a lot of us in this this world like tr think that we are eating the right way and we're exercising and we're doing all this like mindset stuff and because we're doing it we should be getting our parents to do the same mm -hmm. thing and the more that I have found that I've tried to force them into it at a time when they weren't ready for it and didn't want it um, it either drove them away or they would do a little bit of it but it, it wasn't on their terms so it just like backfired and it kind of pushed off when it would actually happen and work mm -hmm. in the end so th that's been a big waste of time it's so weird because because you're right like it the our world like it's it's so easy to fa have fallen into that right and i have i think we all have but what's really interesting about it is just thinking about like well that's also what got us here mm -hmm. <laughs> right like cross you know just talking about cross like it got to where it is because Oh, I had a friend who just won't stop talking about kipping pull-ups. Fine, I'll go try it out. And then, oh, okay, that oh no, it is um, it is amazing. Right. And so like there's there's a need for it. And also the, but there's also a, a line in which I think a lot of us got into it because we we tried it and we got really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we try to get these other people to do it because we're so excited. It makes us feel so good. Mm -hmm that we think everyone will feel the same way. Yep. But it's like not, you know, if somebody came to me and was like, here, playing the drums is going to make you feel amazing. It's like, uh, maybe, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so, but we, of like, it's great because we believe in it so much that, and we want to make everybody around us feel as good as we do. Mm -hmm. But um, it just ends up backfiring. And I think it even, even times when people will come to me and ask for help and be like, you know, I really want to start eating better, exercising, and I get so into it, 
like it just I don't know whether it drives them away or they're not they they think they're ready and they're not or what whatever I mean it's happened to me with other things with like writing mm-hmm. I you know like you even with you like I get in this like mode like I'm like yes I'm, I'm I want to do this now and then I'm like all gung-ho for like a week or two or a month and then it's like <laughs> right. haven't seen Heather on Instagram again for like four months like yep. Yep. <laughs> you know if I uh, um for a lot of that like a, a delicate balance between it's that thing where if you try too hard mm-hmm. you actually you you're creating resistance mm-hmm. and whether it's trying to um hold your breath longer if you try really hard to do that and the thing is you have to relax so you have to have intention with your practice but there also is this level of relaxation and letting things happen and i think if we try to force there's a difference Mm. When you're trying to force someone onto your beliefs and force them to do the things that you're doing, that's probably going to create more resistance than it is move the ball forward. Mm -hmm. Whereas what you said, Patrick, is like, well, yeah, but how then do you share and how Mm -hmm. do you spread the love? Well, I think that's where the delicate balance comes in. If you're not forcing them, you're truly doing it from this thing of like, I just want to share the love and you do what you want with it. Mm-hmm. That may not be, I think what the question was, uh, what you find out was a total waste of time. That might not be a waste of time. Right. Yeah, it is interesting because you're right. When when I think back to the early days, again, just CrossFit's one of the the most obvious examples. It was probably more people's enthusiasm people seeing enthusiasm yeah. in somebody else and less like, oh, you have to come try this. It was like, yeah. why are you so excited about thing? And that's the thing that creates enough curiosity to say, to for some amount of people to say, okay, let me give that a shot. It was less, you gotta come try this, you gotta come try this. And more, I don't have anything in my life that I'm that excited about. And so maybe that's something. And and I think you can fill, you can fill in CrossFit for any number of other things in that in that kind of scenario. Where I think it gets tricky is with kids. You know, like it's your, it's not your responsibility to turn your parents into you, but it is your responsibility to direct your kids in a way where I I think it's like the, the age old, like how much do you push your kid towards something, you know, because they're not motivated yet. You know, like with Bodhi right now, he's, he wants to, his, when we ask what his purpose is in life, he thinks his purpose is to play soccer. And mm-hmm. we're like, that's awesome. Great. Yep. Awesome. Um, and he's nine, nine, 10 and he's 10. Okay. Um, and so he's been doing town soccer with his best friend and he loves it cause it's super fun and they goof around a lot and stuff and they play soccer, but <laughs> it's not like, you know, like yeah. when it's not like he's, he's clarifying his purpose in the world and now he's like developing awareness and intention and action. And like, it's not like it's that real to him yet. So we, he got invited to be on this club team and it's like a big commitment and his best friend is not doing it. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, well, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, well, if soccer is your goal, like you, this is what you do, you know, like you go down this road and he's like, well, Sebastian's not doing it. So I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And so we had to make the decision. We the conversation was like, well, do we make him do it? You know? And it's like, Mm -hmm. Like as a parent, I think it's really hard to know when you make your kid do something, when you make them stay, like stay in like, you know, karate or you make them stay in gymnastics because they they're miserable, but they, you know, you don't want them to give up and learn that quitting is okay, but they're miserable going to gymnastics all the time, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I think that that is when it gets tricky is trying to force your kids to doing what you believe is the right thing to do when they're not happy, Mm -hmm. you know? And in the end, like, yeah, he's, he likes it a lot now, but it was one of those, like, I don't know if he's going to like it or not, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, Ben, let's go to you. What did you finally realize was just a huge waste of time? Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of follow suit with Heather, which is I'll do a sort of um, a small one and then a big one. Uh, the first one is or was for me watching baseball. Mm. Like, <laughs> holy crap. Talk about a waste of time. Like, <laughs> I feel like half the, the listeners are going to be like, hey, I'm fi- uh, if they're, if they, I'm fine with that yeah. because it, it's, oh my gosh, it was, I didn't realize you were ever into baseball. I used to watch every, literally every inning of every Red Sox game. No, this was before know. like they, they beat the reverse, the curse. And, um, you know, when they were, you know, fried chicken and beer in the locker rooms and all that, <laughs> yep. all, um, but it, my great grandfather played for the Red Sox, so I grew up as a p- incredibly passionate Red Sox fan. It was in our blood. It was in our. It was in the family routine. Yeah. yeah. And 
it's a waste of time. Yeah, that's so interesting. I just learned so it's much. It's a total waste of time. Got it. That is okay. so mean. All right, what's the, what's the more serious thing? Well, then uh, the next one, I'm not going to dive too far into it because it was the same as Heather's, which is trying to convince other people yeah. of things and debate in general. Like, yeah, whether it's it's yeah. not just necessarily about our way of life, our healthy way, but whether it's politics or right and wrong in general. Like mm-hmm. right and wrong is just through viewed through the prism of your past experiences. They're like, if you can... We don't, we aren't here to judge other people's right or wrongs, let alone our own right and wrong. And yeah. if we try to persuade people along the way, it's just a waste of time mm-hmm. and we could be doing so much more productive stuff. But the, the bigger, the biggest one, I think is the biggest waste of time that, um, I seem to find is trying to eliminate problems from your life. Mm. Yep. Because they don't, there it's a, it's an impossibility. It's just like it's a, a nature of life yeah. and life for all of us and any of us. And I always say all of us. I don't mean just humans. I mean like any living thing on planet Earth it is going to go through challenge. It's going to go through adversity. There are seasons, and to not want the seasons and to say like I'm going to work really hard to make winter not happen. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how hard you try and avoid it the next thing's coming and people go, well, if I just get the next raise, if I just get married, if I just get the bigger house, if I just get into that great college, if I just, if I just, if I just, and that's not the case Mm -hmm. when you get there, some of the just, some of those things fall away, but they're in, they're replaced by others. We as human beings are problem seeking machines. That's what we do. We do not as like from some of us do. Some of us sit and are complacent and watch Netflix. And But the reason we've risen to the top of the food chain is because we are so good at seeking out problems and solving them. Mm-hmm. So if you are trying to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you're trying to get shelter, food, water, and that goes away, you haven't, you're not like, cool, total enlightenment, let's mm-hmm. chill. Now you have the problem of like, what's my, what's the, what, the social pecking order? Mm-hmm. Where do I rank in the tribe? And then, okay. I am the top of this tribe. Okay, then you go up to the next one and it's like, now I'm the leader and now I have to... Ro- it's The problems don't leave. Mm-hmm. What we should be doing instead of trying to eliminate the problems is trying to be at peace with the problems. Mm-hmm. If we can be at peace regardless of what's going around us because the environment is not going to match up to our expectations ever, if it does, cool. You're in Barbados with a margarita. But when it doesn't, we just need to be able to not let that touch our inside stuff and be cool and chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, it's almost like the only time the problem is not the problem is when you don't look at it like a problem, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, that's only what, in, it's only in identifying it as a problem that you created the problem for yourself versus letting it just be. Is the problem really the problem or is the problem that we have a problem with the problem? <laughs> yeah. Run that one back. Yeah. I, I actually followed that. Love it. <laughs> no, I'm, it I'm like, my, I can't believe I just did that. I love that. Okay. So my answer, actually, it's funny. Uh, you said something which was, it isn't, wasn't my answer coming in, but I think it's, it's at least one of the answers for me, which you'd kind of mentioned this idea of judging ourselves or judging mm-hmm. yourself. I think I've done, a, I've done a pretty darn good job over the last some number of years to stop that, at least in large part. Um, not really intentionally. I think I just finally ran, got to the end of that rope. It's like, well, it's, this isn't going to keep working. <laughs> um, and so I think I kind of inadvertently on purpose have stopped judging myself uh, quite I a bit. I love that, inadvertently on purpose. Inadvertently on purpose. <laughs> um, and, but my answer coming in, which is also something you alluded to, uh, I think the thing that I realized, and probably when I started having kids, that was just a waste of time, was any kind of serialized entertainment, by which I mean like, mm. I don't watch Marvel movies because like they're never going to end. And if you want to really get it, like I don't watch Star Wars. I don't read books that are part one of part of seven parts. I don't start new shows on Netflix because right. that's you say yes to one show, one episode and re- because they're so good. I'm not arguing that they're not good, but you say w- yes problem. to one episode. You've actually just committed to 15 to 20 to 30 to 50 hours of your life because they're so good that they're going to make right. you come back for it. And so I've just, I just, re- again, it was, I think it was started when I had kids and I just like stopped having the time. I just stopped starting things that I knew were really not an hour investment, but 10 hours, 12 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours. I love movies. I love like miniseries. Like I can do that if I know like beginning and end. Okay. I get that. 
But anything that's like, oh, I don't know, the season one of how many, I don't know how many seasons this is going to go. I just like don't even, I like, I will leave the room because I, I will get hooked just like everybody else. I, but I leave the room because I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to know who's died this episode of This Is Us. I just don't want to know because then I'll sit down and watch the rest of it. It's like, right? it's for the same reason you don't go to the blackjack table, exactly. right? It's because yep. you know that if you are there, the, the potential for you to lose the control game, yeah. the game is, is and I don't want to give up. The game is too good. <laughs> yeah. I, when you, before you started, you were like, um, serialized and I was like, Oh no, is he going to demonize cereal? Cause cereal's <laughs> oh, so good. I love cereal too much. <laughs> it's like, don't do this to cereal. Cereal is not a waste of time. No, cereal is not. So a Ben's waste of time. focusing. I have one quick more one that I just, yeah, I need yeah. to throw in cause it's going to eat me alive. If I don't is, um, is I think a big waste of time is rushing. Mm. I think that when it's that, it's that, um, quote we used to have on our chalkboard in our mm -hmm. kitchen was like, if you don't have time to do it right the first time, when will you, how will you have time to fix what you mm -hmm. messed up? You know, it's like when you're rushing, everything is like dropping and you're forgetting things. And I think it's such a waste of time to rush. Like just when you're in a rush, just like put the brakes on and slow down and you'll actually end up where you need to be faster. Yeah. That's hard with kids. Or do you find that that's hard with kids? I find it hard not to. I don't remember life without kids. So I don't know what that question I, even means. I find it so hard because the, at least my five-year-old, he's so it goes so slow <laughs> and his slowness makes us want to like ramp up the intensity of the speed. So like, we'll bring him to average and what is exactly what you're saying though. It just makes everything. And he still doesn't notice we're frantic, but he's like, la, la, la. it's like, you know, the Leidens from CrossFit yes. oh, in yes. Connecticut. Yep. So La J Joss is like the most high maintenance friend of my, I've ever had in my life. And she like takes forever getting ready. And J Jay is downstairs waiting because they're supposed to have left like 20 minutes ago. And he's like, Joss, are you ready yet? In like a nice way. And she's like, now I'm crying. Now I have to take all of my makeup off, makeup off and start all over again. And he's like, oh my God. It's like, just let her take her time. All right. Love it. Slow right. is smooth. Smooth is fast. Right. All right. Let's love move on. Ben, you can go first on this one. What skill or life lessons do you wish your parents would have taught you? Okay. So I'll go skill first and then life lesson. I'll, um, and maybe they're both one and the same, but I would love to really know how to camp, mm. like really good, like camping. And I like not out of a trunk, like not, yeah, not out of like an SUV, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not where you bring not like our not, backyard, not glamping, the not, not where you bring like the catered meal to it. Like you, like go you know how to use like the stove and you know how to like start fires and pitch tents and all of that stuff. I more like wilderness stuff. That would be really cool and not that way i didn't have exposure to it i was a boy scout and we did camp yeah, but i didn't i don't have the skill i yeah. i wouldn't feel comfortable confident going out in the woods for a week by myself yep. and be cool to, i would love that skill set yep um and then more life lesson i don't know if it's a life lesson more of a a personality trait that i wish i had had more exposure to and developed more um that i'm kind of just learning to that heather's helped me out with a ton is vulnerability mm. and this i the idea that things don't need to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. And when you, it's kind of what Heather was just saying, is like when you slow down, you actually go faster. When you rush, it takes longer. Mm. It's the same thing with the vulnerability. Like the more you're willing to open up, the more you just get to be free and experience life where you think if you close things up, you won't have to... Um, you'll have a better chance of, of being happy. Mm -hmm. And I, the last 10 years have taught me otherwise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on the, the first one because I'm curious about that. What, do, were your parents or was your dad like an outdoors person or was no. it just like it just... It just well, wasn't he's there. a hunter. He hunts and he's out yeah, there. So and like, like, cause, so and I ask because I'm the same because I feel the same way. It, like, it was the, I was the, I was the, I was average, yeah. right? We would take maybe one car camping trip every two years and then uh like as boy scouts we went in tents and so i had to have i've had exposure to it and then when i was in college i lived in a tent this is gonna sound weird now yeah it, sounds it, like I know, it is weird now that but it was yeah. car camping it was like we pulled into a campsite we pitched a tent and we would bring our yeah that's you know the back to the, it would have been it, we didn't have it then but we would have taken our chipotle back yeah. or we would have gotten our um, steak tips and throwing them on the grill that we lit with a Kingsford charcoal. It's that's not camping. Yep. So I've had the intermediate expo exposure to it, but I would love the expert exposure mm -hmm. where this is how you 
you you you forage for your food or this is how you mm-hmm. camp super you bring your food super light so you can know how to do this and how you can ex- be truly on your own in solitude that would be incredibly powerful and freeing to me mm. yeah that's so funny that, that you say that because i've been thinking about that a lot for some reason i stumbled in like t- two podcasts in a row one was with uh, a guy named Steve Ranella, who I guess is really well known. He's like a, a hunter, outdoorsman, author, um, and he was on the Daily Stork podcast. And then I was listening to another one on Tim Ferriss. Uh, he's a he was a lion tracker, um, and I don't know. I just Whoa. happened to like listen to both of them back to back, and it that was my takeaway. It was like, I not intentionally, but I'm so far removed from that thing that you're explaining. And even if it's like camping is one thing, but just right. like the comfort of being able to go do. St- something like that and the confidence to say, let's go out and do that for two days or three days or four days. It's, it's so easy to just like, just, I just live inside my four walls. <laughs> well, and the, the more we've gotten kind of uh, exposed to this, um, uh, I don't know how to say, but the awe and power of nature, right? Yeah. Like that's going what, to yeah, Hawaii yeah, yeah. and going to Iceland and, um, you know, even just being on the ocean in the summers and being in the mountains in the winters, there's so much to that and what i feel like we're seeing it in snapshots and almost through like a tourist view of it mm-hmm. we are not immersing ourselves in it like we heather goes for hikes multiple times a week that's amazing walks in the woods that's amazing but it's almost like a tourist like you're stopping in saying hi and leaving getting back in my suv right <laughs> yeah right. exactly that's warmed a, up when i as opposed yeah. to like living it and living in nature would be super. And I don't mean that we need to go and totally. spend months yeah. there, but you know, prolonged enough that you get to be a little bit in tune with it. You know, even when we go to Hawaii and you're on the, or even on the Cape and you're on the water and you just intuitively know when high tide is yeah. and you can feel the air pressure and see storms come in. Uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of that in terms of um, living our fullest. I think that it's, if we live in the concrete jungle where we see the sky and these little slivers, um, between these huge concrete structures, we, no matter how much work we do on ourselves, we're still leaving stuff untapped. Yeah. Well, I think it also, I don't think it's like coincidence that you are feeling like that now that you've been doing so much of this, like soul searching stuff that, you know, like when you go to a place like Hawaii where they live, so in tune with, um, with like the moon cycles and the tide cycles. And, you know, you see how it all, it all works the way it does. You start to realize like how little we are, you know, how we talk about that all the time. It's like, you see that nature just happens and you have no control over it. And, and that the more you can just like live with it and not live in friction with it and try and fight the forces, like the more like harmony you find in your life. And I think that is, it's very much taught through nature, I think. So I'd like to know how to light a camping stove. <laughs> is hunting part of that or is it? So just, hunting is, this is, a, we, you had mentioned this in a previous episode. This like, is the, yeah. my new thing. Like yeah. uh, the hunting thing is like the most, it's one of the bigger paradigm shifts, like the 180 I've had in my life in the past six months. Cause mm-hmm. this is really recent. I was um, really a I don't, I want to say against hunting because I was never against it. I just didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't Resistant understand it, it. And I had no desire. And actually I had more of a, uh, the fear is not the right word, but a distaste for it. I couldn't imagine going and seeing a beautiful, beautiful, big, and like an elk and being like, boom. And like watching it hit the ground, bleed out and do all that stuff. What I've come to realize though, is that is the most sustainable way for if we all just this right it's not going to happen mm-hmm. but if we all just hunted our own food the world would revert to a much better place mm-hmm. if industrial farming was gone that didn't exist at all and instead we all shot the whatever it was from a a, a gopher to an elk to a deer to whatever it was and that's the way we provided for ourselves. It it's it is first off. It's the most. I think he was actually listening to Joe Rogan is one of the first mm-hmm. place that he was like, "You realize what we're eating when we eat when you go to the supermarket and buy beef? You're eating the most disgusting, fat, lazy, <laughs> um, 
decrepit animal of that species. Mm -hmm. You know what happens when you go out and kill an elk, which is like this incredibly healthy athlete? You're getting this so, like the nutrition you're getting from one versus the other is, it's a, one is processed food. Mm -hmm. The other is super clean. And that's when I was like, whoa, yeah, it's true actually. And what if we did kill an elk as a family? And that provided us for four months worth of food, that one thing. Instead of these slaughterhouses, 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 we would need to kill for our family one animal every multiple months mm -hmm. and be good. A lot of elk and Natick. <laughs> we could, we could go somewhere to do it. <laughs> and maybe there would be if we didn't have... Maybe that's true, yeah. Maybe there would be. Not in Natick, but no, no. Western Mass. Yep, totally. All right, Heather, your turn. Uh, what skill or life lessons do you wish your parents would have taught you? Okay, so this it kind of goes back to the last conversation we just had about forcing things onto people. But it, I have two things that one for each of my parents that um, they're both very good at, but they did not, I think they could have forced it on me more. Mm. Um, so I think my mom could have forced the gardening thing on me. Mm -hmm. I The more I learn about blue zones and centenarians and the one common thing, like the one consistent thing among all of them is that they garden every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're exercising every single day and they're doing all this like high intensity work. It's more that they're just moving and it's something they can do every day until they're 107 years old. And they're so in touch with nature, like physically in touch with nature that it's, it, you know, I, I think it's really cool and I'm just starting to get into it, but I'm like so excited. I just, I kind of do wish, I, my mom did it forever and I do kind of wish that she had made me go out into the yard with mm. her for an hour a day or something and <laughs> right. just like taught me all of it. And we could have learned that together. Yep. Um, and then on my dad's side, he, I wish that he forced me to sit in the boat with him for hours every day in the summertime and teach me about the water and the wind and how to like steer a boat around and dock it. And cause we have a boat now and I can't, and I'm learning like, pretty quickly, but not quick enough. I want to be able to take the boat out by myself and I'm just not ready yet. And I mm -hmm. spent my entire life growing up on a boat and I just never, I just wasn't motivated enough, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I could have learned a lot more from him and being. It's interesting. I like how you thought about it, like each parent, cause I didn't think about it like that. But what do you think? Thinking back on that, do you think you would have been too resistant to either one of those? I was if, very resistant. Yeah, like that's and that's what you were talking yeah. about before. Yeah. Like, how do you? I don't know. I don't know if I. Maybe they did try, <laughs> yeah, and I just true. fought them off too, like totally. And they and they stopped because. And now my mom is, you know, she and she, like she another one would be like cooking and, um, and she does try to like you know if I say like oh I, I I'm thinking about making like a soup she'll be like oh well just grab this and this and just do that and it's always like just this just that and I like if. And I do the same thing with our kids. So I'm not like, I'm not knocking her. It's more like, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, just do this. And, but if there was like some kind of structure to it, like if she had said to me, okay, there's four things you need to learn about cooking. You need to learn about heat and acid and salt and, you know, and fat. And if she had said, we got to get these four things down. And then from that, you can make thousands of recipes, mm -hmm. you know, you can figure it all out. Um, but instead it was just a little bit too like scattered and I do the same thing with our kids and I, you know, I'm not, we're not like teachers, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I don't have like a curriculum and everything, but if I could sit down for a second and think to myself, like, it'd be cool to do that with my kids, like pick one thing and just be able to like really educate them on it. And I guess we're doing it kind of with exercise, but, um, yeah, so those are my things. And then my personality thing would be time management. Mm. If my parents could have just taught me mm. how that to would manage be helpful. time, it would be. Is it too late? Like too I late? said to yeah. Ben, like, uh, like a year ago, I'm 45. So when I was 44, I said to him, I was like, so what people are just like walking around, like figuring out how long it's going to take to get somewhere. And like knowing what their next thing on their schedule is. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what all the time. <laughs> Because like I would think in my head, I'd be like home and we'd have a, a one o'clock meeting and I'd be like, okay, meeting starts in, in 10 minutes, but I'm still home. Like I'm not there yet. I'm like, I'll be fine. I'll be there. I'll be, I'm, I'll be ready at one. It's like, you have to plan <laughs> to drive and like would, leave. And that's the time she would like start to pack yeah. up to yeah. leave Yeah. with like multiple kids and other things going on and yeah. cooking and time in. It's not even like, good. it's not even like. I leave at one. 
that might be understandable. Okay, so you've had a year now. Are you getting better at least? <laughs> There's improvement. I'll answer. <laughs> There's improvement. Right, yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, love that. All right. So the one thing I thought about, and I, this is one of those things that they wouldn't have even like, it wasn't even an, an idea to them. But I think the one thing that would have been great to have been taught or learned younger was just the power of mindfulness or meditation, whatever you want to call it. Just like that. And really to say like the, the, the understanding that thoughts aren't real, <laughs> right? You spend so much of your, especially young, you spend so much time believing every thought that you, that you have and you start going down every single one of those rabbit holes and they're n none of them are nice. <laughs> none of them are useful. And it just like to, to, to and again, I say this cause like I, the, nobody was doing this in, you know, the eighties and then, but like now it's kind of cool that it is changing a little bit. At least I think it's changing to just get that understanding that like, Oh, those thoughts that you have, don't believe every single one of them, question them, think about them, take a deep breath before you assume that ever, that you're telling yourself the truth about everything. Mm -hmm. And just to, just to have had that understanding that there's, there's a gap there <laughs> between the thought and the, and the truth, uh, I think just would, I think, I just think it would be really helpful, really useful. It is cool how it's becoming more the norm, yep. more in vogue. And I always wonder about that. Is it becoming more the norm and more acceptable, more a part of every day, or are we just finding, or, a, yeah. are we just opening up a new door that we're exploring a new room and now we are in the room. So we see more of it. Yep. So I don't know the answer to that, but it seems like it's becoming a thing that more people are exploring themselves. Mm -hmm. And if that's where it's going to start to get that to the kids in the younger generation, like Heather does it with our kids class. She mm -hmm. talks about it every day. She sits them down for five to 10 minutes after class. And many of the discussions are about just that. So how powerful. It's yeah. super cool. Just to yeah, give, just to have that tool in the tool set. The, the yeah. toolkit. And they can, they'll pick, pick it up when you're ready to, but just knowing that it's there. I think is the powerful that, thing. That popping the lid off that and just that one piece of awareness at any age, at any because for many of us, you know, it maybe it took you until just uh, ten years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you had that, depending on what decade you find that in, wow, like because it's exponential. Like the yeah. longer that you live with that, it's like it's like investing in something. Exactly, the it's right. It's you're compounding. The, yeah, you're exactly. compounding the returns on that investment. Yep. And if that investment, the awareness of the thought thing, mm -hmm. it comes into the picture at age seven to ten. That's really different than it coming into just like for your four hundred one k. Really different than that comes in after you know you retire and you go, oh my gosh, this. Awesome. Even if you try to, to, to throw everything you've got at it yeah. when you're 40 would have been better at 14 to just spend a little bit, just drop yeah. a little bit into the same that, time right? though. Like the best time to plant it, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Starting CrossFit. It's you like, know, yep. yeah. People are like, I'm too old. It's like, you're never too old to start CrossFit. We did that with, in kids class one day where we I was like, I was like, so guys, you know those voices in your head? And this kid, literally, he like his face dropped. And he was like, you hear those? You hear those voices too? And I was like, yes, we all do. It was like, but I also did that with a like another 55-year-old woman the same day. And she was yeah. like, those voices, you hear them too? I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. I don't hear the voices in your head. <laughs> that's your, that's yeah. the voice for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Last question we've got. If you had enough money to build your dream house, What's a strange room or feature that you would include? You're, you're up on this one. You want me to go first? Okay, so I've tried to do this and failed in a few different places, by which I mean just like uh, I've, I've attempted in the offices that I've had in apartments in the house I have now to transform them into as close to a coffee shop as I possibly can. <laughs> and I've generally failed but I've tried every single time, but that would be the weird or strange room. I would, I would like, I don't even know how big it would have to be like 12 by 20. I would basically just want to like replicate like the coolest, funkiest little coffee shop that you've ever been in for coffee or to for... work in. And just like, oh, yeah. there's coffee there, but it's just like the vibe of the coffee shop, you know, the big, yeah. you, have, you, have, you have people smell. like working there. That's, so the, that's where I get, that's where it gets weird is would it work if it was just me every day <laughs> yeah. or is it like, like, like people? What's, no. what's the question? If you had enough money, yeah. 
So if you had enough money, yes, you have a full staff there. Sure. There you go. I, yeah. Waiting hand and foot for the, no, but for, the, <laughs> for, the for the once every for the two two yeah. cups of coffee that I have yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For once every twenty three hours and forty minutes that Patrick comes in. No, I think I think even without the baristas, uh I think it would I'd s I would still like it. Really? Music, ambiance, vibe. Part of the the draw of a coffee shop is like the people watching. Yeah, you know, to a degree. If you like yep. if they're all servants of yours. Can I, I will admit that there was a period where I, you you can find this anywhere, but I had an app that would pl like an audio app that I would listen to that was the sound of a coffee shop. So I would like oh. be in my office with headphones on and oh like, boy <laughs> likes coffee shops. Yeah, it would just be like you know clinking of dishes and little chatter. Over Are you here. into like the depths of coffee and making not at it all. and not at all? Not at all. I'm, uh -huh. I. Uh, other than like, I can taste he still drinks Mac crappy. In the house. Yeah, I can no, tell. You don't. I can tell crappy yeah. coffee. But beyond that, it's like, like no, I don't. I'm no. not a wine. Uh, not a coffee snob. I was gonna say a wine snob. Not that either. Um, but no, it's the. It's just like the being the there vibe. and the vibe and the mm -hmm. yeah and like the, the leather couches sweet. and the comfortable chairs and the. Is your home like that at all? Um, it's not not like that, but it's not like fully that. No. Yeah. 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 So that's that's my weird thing. Cool. And then if not that, I would just like full on like not judging, movie that, theater. That, that, that's, that's weird, dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, full movie theater is like a default. Like you know, a lot of people would kind of go with yeah. that one. Yeah. That was Jonah's answer yeah. when we talked about this yesterday. Yeah. Um, mine would be, okay, so years ago I lived in, um, in a house and I had a room, a whole room that was all set up for sewing. Mm -hmm. And like the sewing machine was sitting on this nice big table that plenty of space and my spools of thread were hanging on the wall. I could see every color and they were easy to get to and organize. And, um, I like, if I could build in a house, like a, an entire floor of like floor to ceiling windows with great natural light and just like all of my like art mediums, like mm -hmm. all ready to go, like a throwing wheel for ceramics and like, like a canvas set up to paint and photography set up and mm. all of it. Like, I think, I just think it'd be so awesome to be able to just, whenever I felt like sewing, like I just grab a remnant of fabric and like make something, you know, if I could just like walk into this room just every day, like make something new, I think it'd be so awesome. Mm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like that's what I would do. So creative. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think yeah. that that's, I think that's cool. I don't, I don't know that I would consider that to be strange, but I think maybe I don't know. that. I'd and a coffee it. shop in it. There. Oh, so, yeah. uh. but it's so funny, but like it's the, the, my thing and your thing are the exact same. We just want an environment where we go in and it puts us in the mood, which is all what coffee shops do to me. It just like, it, it focuses me. Like I want to write, I want to read. I want to like, that's what I want to do there. And for yeah. you, I think it's the same. It's like, put us in a place, put us in an environment that puts us in the mindset to do Create. the thing we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's yours is yeah. Ben's like a video game <laughs> <laughs> arcade. Yeah. All right. So you far. go. Uh, mine would be, so I'll do, um, kind of the weird and then the, the feature, the feature for me would be a completely organic, sustainable farm. Mm -hmm. Like just to have a hunt, like the biggest little farm, mm -hmm. the, the, the Netflix series have that. I would love to have the biggest little farm. I've never biggest seen. little farm. It's a, oh it's a Netflix God, movie. You should watch it. Cool. It's phenomenal. But I would, ha I would love that. Now I wouldn't want to be the person that's out there like fixing the fence posts and like pulling get, the calf out of the, yeah, yeah like when the, when the, the, <laughs> when the chickens get attacked by a coyote, like cleaning up the dead bodies and stuff like that. I don't want, I want the romantic portion of the, of the, <laughs> of the farm, not the, not yep. the grit and the grime, yep. <laughs> but for all the reasons that we talked about a lot for even today, I, I would love to live off the land and I love the idea of the sustainable and, um, each thing feeding itself. So the, it, to me, that would be a incredible, incredible daily home life mm -hmm. to be around all of that nature. And it would be very much a lot of not industrial farming. So there would be the owls and the gophers and everything else. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. And then the other, like completely flips, the easy answer is I would have a gym with a recovery center and all that stuff. That's the easy answer. The weird one I would have is a, a car, a car <laughs> detailing in my garage. <gasps> oh my God. I was, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, so like every yes. day you get in your car, every day you get in your that. car, and God, couldn't we care. just slapped high five. Yeah. <laughs> every day you she get in your slap. car. Oh my God, I'm so turned on right now. 
and it's like a brand new car and it smells like a brand new car. Wow, okay. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. You don't drive enough, so uh, yeah. I don't even drive that much. Yeah. Like when you close the garage door to go to bed at night, it, like it turns into like a like a, a shower for your car and it yeah, just everything. like does no, ev- no, all like of it. The people come and clean it out with like yeah. Q-tips and the vents. and Interesting. It, should, it was never... like a self-cleaning car, like the inside of it would just like... I would have itself. something of the equivalent for the actual house, but there isn't that for the actual house. Yeah. Like there's no... Unless you have like a, unless the feature, because I think you said feature yeah. in the question. Uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe, the, yeah. maybe the feature would be just like a... Self-cleaning house. A wife. <laughs> no, like, like a, a, I don't know what to say, either, whether it's like a maid or a butler, like that type of thing, like a house manager that just keeps it all... A housekeeper. Housekeeper. Maybe it's like a housekeeper, professional assistant, but that's not... I don't think that's a feature, right? That's a yeah. person. Yeah. Usually doesn't come with the house. So what we need to do is we have to, we have to, you have to, like you did with a coffee shop. And yep. then do you want to staff it? Yeah. So I would go car detailing thing yep. and then I would staff it. <laughs> okay. Back to the, the, the sustainable thing. Is that, and I literally, I don't know the answer. Is that what homesteading is? Like, I don't know what homesteading is, but like, I've seen some people, like I've seen that as a term. Do you guys I actually idea? don't know. I like, think that's yeah. roughly what homesteading is. It's like, it's, it's like living in a sustainable system. Yeah, that's what I would love to be able to do. Well, clearly, it, we don't but, know. It would be amazing to do that with like acres and acres yeah. and all of the, you know. But also it, Home Depot around the corner. <laughs> like the orchards and the yeah. prairies and the mountains and the streams and the lakes and super cool. All right. Well, if anybody knows what homesteading is, reach out. Let me know because I'm curious. <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. That was super fun. That was Hopper Talk. Thank you, everybody out there for listening. Thank you for your ratings and your reviews. Ben and I, and maybe even Heather, will be back for another episode of Chasing Excellence soon. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.